All right, the next probability section. Today we're going to be discussing these things called independent and dependent events. So our essential question, how do I find the probability of multiple events happening in a row? So here's how today is different than 10.4. In 10.4, we looked at events that were overlapping, but today we're going to look at events, multiple events that are happening in a row. So they're not necessarily overlapping, they're happening one after the other, and you'll see what I mean when we get there. I wanted an essential meme of today, and so I searched independent events, because it's in the title of the video, and I got these memes. They struck me as amusing, especially put back to back, so you're welcome for that. Um, okay, so let's look at, first of all, what do I mean by these independent, dependent events? What am I actually doing here? So don't worry about this second example just yet. Just take a look at the first example. And we're going to talk about independent events first. Independent events have no impact on each other. They don't impact each other. One happens and then the other happens. They have no impact. Here's your example. You roll a six-sided die three times in a row. So you roll, you get a number. You roll again, you get a number. You roll again, you get a number. What is the probability that you just rolled three sixes in a row? Now think about it. Let's say, anyway, um, let's say you roll a six. Does that impact what you're going to roll next time? Are you more likely to roll another six? Are you less likely to roll another six? No, that's ridiculous. The die kind of resets each time. So the probability of the first roll is going to be not impacted by the probability of the second roll, which is going to be not impacted by the probability of the third roll. These are all totally independent events, and what's really cool is I can just treat them like slots. So in this first slot is the probability of rolling a 6 on the first roll. So what's the probability of rolling a 6? 1 out of 6. This second slot, probability of rolling a 6 is still 1 out of 6 on the second roll. The third roll, Still one out of six, so I'm left with one out of 216, which, let me just calculate that real quick, just to get a percent. One divided by 216 is about 0.5%. So independent events, each dice roll does not impact the other. I treat it like slots. It's easy, right? Let's look at dependent events. They're almost just as easy, except with dependent events, the events impact each other. So after the first event happens, that's going to impact the second event. So let's look at my example. You draw four cards from a 52-card deck without replacing them. And here's where the impact comes in. If I have 52 cards and I choose one of them, how many cards do I have left? Well, now there are only 51 cards. And so that second event, the second time I draw, the probability is just going to be a little bit different. So. For this problem, I'm looking at what is the probability of drawing four queens in a row. So again, I'm going to think of this in terms of slots. The first slot is going to be the first draw. The second slot is going to be the second card. The third slot is going to be the third card. And the fourth slot is going to be the fourth card, obviously. Now, let's look at the slots one at a time. I know that there are four queens in a deck. So the probability of drawing a queen on the first draw is 4 out of 52. But now let's think about what happens in the second draw. How many cards do I have left? Well, since I picked out a card right here, I only have 51 cards left. Likewise, since I picked a queen out, I'm holding a queen right now. How many queens are left in the deck? Only three, right? Because not only is there one less card, but there's also one less queen. And these are therefore dependent events, because this probability is different than this probability. They've impacted each other. From here, I think you get the point. Now there's only two queens left out of 50 total cards, and then there's only one card left out of 49 cards. So if you notice, it actually gets harder and harder to draw a queen because there are less and less queens in the deck. So let's calculate this probability. You could multiply top times top to get 24 over bottom times bottom. I'm just stalling for time as I put this into my calculator. On the bottom you get a big number, but the point is let's just do 24 divided by that big number. You get about 
3.69 times 10 to the negative 6th. That's 0 0.00000369. There's your chance of drawing four queens in a row. In other words, it's incredibly, incredibly unlikely to happen. And that makes sense because think about all those cards and you're drawing four queens in a row. That's crazy. So, summary. Both of these can be solved with slots <laughs> or stots. And, uh, <laughs> and um, deep independent events, they don't impact each other. Like rolling a die, flipping a coin would be independent. Dependent events do impact each other. Like when I draw a card out, now the deck is just a little bit different than it was the first time. Okay, there's one other aspect of this section, so bear with me. This is called conditional probability. We're going to go back to looking at overlapping events, but here when we're looking at overlapping events, we're going to be calculating the probability given that I already know something happened. So let's see what's going on here. Here's our example. Uh, my math class of 23 people has 10 males. It has five people missing, like five people are absent. Four of the p missing people were males. So let's set up a little Venn diagram here. Um, one of the bubbles is going to represent the males in the class. The other bubble is going to represent the missing people in the class. These are overlapping events because some of the missing people were male. So remember, when I'm setting up a Venn diagram, I always need to start in the middle. Four people that were missing were male. So they're in the overlap, right? They were both missing and male. Um, since five people total were missing, I already have four in the overlap. That means one person was missing who wasn't male. In other words, that one person is a female. Likewise, since I have ten males, I already have four in the overlap. Those were the four people that were missing. So I have six males that weren't missing. Now if I have 23 people, let's see. I have 11 people total in the bubbles. That means I'm going to have 12 people total outside of the bubble. So these were like females that were there, right? They're not male. They weren't missing. They're females that are in class. They're females that are here. Okay, so first of all, let's get the obvious out of the way. What's the probability of picking a male? Well, there are 10 males out of 23 people. So that's just 10 out of 23, right? And I would denote that probability of picking a male. So easy, right? But let's take a look at how this question compares with the next question. In the next one, I'm looking for the probability of picking a male given the person is sick. So, or sorry, I, I should have changed that to missing. It should say missing. Given the person is missing. So think about what I'm looking at here. If I parse down the sentence, I only really care about the missing people and I'm trying to figure out the probability of picking a male only from those missing people. So first of all, here's the notation. Probability of male given, that little line means given, that the person is missing. So probability of male given that they're missing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on only the missing people because I know that the person is missing and I'm trying to figure out the probability of a male given that the person is missing. So I'm going to zoom in on only the missing people. I'm only looking at these missing people. I'm not worrying about these other males. I'm not worrying about these other females that were there. I'm only looking at the missing people. Now, how many total missing people were there? Five. How many of them were male? Well, these people, because they're in the overlap. So four out of five. That's the whole deal with conditional probability. So notice, males in the class were 10 out of 23. That's a little under 50%. But if I'm looking for the probability of males that were missing, now I'm up to 80%. So let's do another example, kind of doing it the opposite way around. I'll reset my bubbles. Next, we're looking for the probability of, I don't know why I wrote sick, it should be missing here, it should be missing, I guess it's the same, but some people skip, right? But you're not one of those people, right? Even though this video is getting close to 10 minutes long, you're like sticking in there, you would never skip class. The probability of a missing person, it's five people, right? Five people are missing out of the 23, but, but. What if I look at the probability of a missing person given that I already know that person is a male? 
So remember what this means. I'm going to zoom in on only the male data. I'm only caring about the males and I'm trying to figure out what percent of them are missing. So I'm zooming in on only the males. I'm not worrying about this missing female. I'm not worrying about any of the other females. I'm only looking at the males. How many total males are there? Well, in the bubble I have this six and this four. That's 10 total. How many of these males were missing? Well, only the four that were in the overlap were missing and this reduces to two out of five. So notice, if I look at overall the missing people, this is around 20%, but if I'm looking at the missing people given that I already know it's a male, it's now 40%. So that's how conditional probability works. So quick summary, ind independent events, just like slots, it's easy. These slots do not affect each other. Dependent events, again, we're using slots, but now the slots affect each other and we have to think about how. For conditional probability, I know something about the people I'm trying to pick. I need to zoom in. All right, thanks for watching.